Linda. I'm with the Cutting Edge Stained Glass Studio and today I want to show you how to embellish a stained glass piece to enhance it uh, using wire, beads, any found items. So I want to take this little sun catcher and I want to make it look like this. As you can see, by embellishing it, it really enhances the piece and takes it to a whole nother level. For this project, I will be using two different thicknesses of wire. On the left, 14 gauge, which will be flattened. On the right, 20 gauge, which will be used decoratively. Now when you're using wire in stained glass, obviously you have to be able to solder it. So any copper wire will you do. This is a copper wire that has been tinned so that it's silver and you can buy this from any stained glass supplier. Um, as far as buying wire from the stocks, the box stores, um, any copper wire you buy from them will work, but I don't believe they have anything that's tinned. You can't use aluminum, you can't use gal you know, galvanized, it would have to be a tinned copper. We're going to get ready to flatten our wire for this project. The first step is you want to shape your wire the way you want it for your project. I've already shaped this, bent it, twirled it, what have you, into the shape that I'm happy with. Um, you can use a little jewelry tool to twist your wire, like so, or you just make little loops, what have you. It's very pliable. You can bend it with your fingers, do whatever it is. You can stretch it back out. So now that we have the shape that we want, we're ready to flatten it. I'm going to put hearing protection on. And you need something hard. This is a railroad tie, anything that's sturdy. And a good hammer and you just start pounding away. At this point, you're going to notice that it's really curved, so I just flip it over and give it another couple swats with the hammer, and that straightens it out. So now it's ready to be put into your project. So now that we have the thick wire prepared for our project, we want to work on our thinner wire. I've already uh, shaped this piece because I know it's going to fit exactly where I want if, um, in the project. So that's all ready to go. And I'm leaving this, I'm not going to flatten this with a hammer. I want to leave this rounded. For the beads, you use another thin piece. And what I did, if you saw my video on making antennas for butterflies, I did the same process where I twirl it and I fill it with solder. And the reason I do that is to hold my beads in place as I'm putting them on this piece of wire. So now you just add your beads. That way, see, they'll just stay in place as you're adding them. And you can use as many as you want, whatever colors you want, it's all up to you. This is just what I chose for this project. And they don't have to be glass beads, they can be plastic, because you're not going to put any uh, soldering iron on it. So I left myself enough space to use for when I get ready to solder this on. So now that's ready. So that's our second element. Our third element is going to be nuggets that have been foiled and tinned. And just a little added tip for today, I like to put 3 16 foil on my nuggets. That way it's not too uh, fat, because if you use 730 seconds, it tends to be a little too much foil around your little nuggets. So just uh, put it on like that, and then you're just going to crimp it a little bit, just like that, 
And then take any little plastic container you can find, throw them in there, and give it a good shake. And you've just burnished your nuggets. So that's one little tip that I wanted to give you today. So now what you would do is you would put flux on these and tin them like I did with these. You want to have them ready before you put them into your project. So now we're ready to start applying our elements. I'm going to start with the largest piece of flattened out wire. I'm going to use this previous one that I made kind of as my guide. That's totally up to you. Sometimes I like to draw out my ideas before I start all this. Sometimes I just do it willy-nilly. So, but this one, it's pretty planned. So we're just gonna add some flux to our wire and where we're gonna solder it. Now notice that I can't hold this piece way out like this because I wanna make sure that this is close enough to the heart to get it soldered. So you have to keep that in mind as well when you're doing this. Okay, so that's attached. Notice that my hook kind of went loose there, but that's easily fixed later. Now we're gonna go down here and we're gonna attach it to the side. I wear gloves because the wire can get hot as you're working with it. Now I'm going to apply the thin wire. As soon as I decide where I want it, again, apply some flux and some solder. Now when it bounces like that, don't panic. It's just a matter of pushing it back down, holding it in place, and reapplying your solder. It happens. And let's see, we decide how, where we want to put this, and I'm going to put it right there. Okay. Now it's time to apply our other flattened piece. Just uh, attaching it to your solder line. Usually it only takes a couple places to solder to hold the wire because it's really not heavy. Now that one is attached. Now that we have the wire in place, we're ready to add the nuggets and the beads. Um, I'm going to add the nuggets first. So this one this little one's going down here. Now see my wire's in the way, not a problem. I'm going to loosen that just for the moment. And I'm going to get my nugget in there. I call these happy mistakes. Sometimes it redesigns it a little bit, which is fine. There are no set rules, it's all up to the artist. Have fun with it. So now I kind of like how that turned out because now that wire will be on top of that nugget which adds another little element of design. So I'm gonna take this and hold it in place. And re-solder that. And I like that better. Now we'll come up here and put these in. I love doing pieces that have negative spot spaces because it just leaves it wide open for decorating. All right, now we're ready to 
attach the beads. Now the beads can be a little bit more tricky because you, you don't want them to be loose. You don't want your beads going like this. So I try to get it soldered close to where the bead is, but of course not so close that I melt the bead. Okay, now that I have the bead attached, I can play with this wire that I have left over. And there's a number of things I can do with it, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and make some little waves. So I'm bending it this way. Yes, I need my finger here. <laughs> Bend it back. You know, you can do anything you want. You can do little twirls, whatever look you want. Don't be afraid to try different things. It really, you can't wreck it. If you don't like it, just take your soldering iron, heat it up, take it off, start over. Oops, that one didn't attach. Here we go. Get a little closer. I like to make sure it's bent down too so that it doesn't poke out. There we go. Now at this point, I like to make sure um, that I solder a little bit of it on the back side as well. So I flip it over and make sure that everything is attached well from behind just this added protection so it doesn't pop off of there. Cleans it up a little bit. We can now do a side-by-side -side comparison to show how embellishments can add that element of style and sophistication to any project, no matter your skill level.